HD28 that I've had for five or six years now. It's set up with 13 gauge strings and it's, it's just a massive instrument. It sounds really good. Unfortunately, this year, the top of it cracked. I had to get it repaired. And I've, to be honest, I've taken this in more uh, dangerous situations than I care to admit taking a $3,000 guitar into. Dive bars and playing outside and stuff. And the more I've been thinking, uh, this is a really tough guitar to play with 13s or 14s on it. It sounds really great with those heavy strings and I want to keep it that way. I want to keep it in a nice environment, humidified, uh, just for enjoyment and recording so that when I need it to sound really good, it will sound really good. Uh, and more and more I've been thinking about getting an OM guitar that I could use whenever I need an OM guitar, but mainly to take into those dive bar situations uh, as a live instrument. And so obviously I settled on the Eastman E20 OM, uh, which is unashamedly Eastman's take at the Martin OM28. Although if you look at the dimensions actually, it's pretty, uh, it's more closely resembles the triple O from Martin than the OM, but uh, they're, they're pretty similar instruments. I played a little bit earlier in the video, I'm going to play it again later. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on how they compare, I thought I'd just speak a little bit on the similarities and the differences that I've found between the two instruments. So first up, the Martin. This is an HD28. The D28 from Martin is probably most well known uh, out of all their models. The HD28 is the exact same guitar except the bracing on the underside of the top is slightly scalloped. Uh, and when I played them back to back, I found that this guitar, as opposed to the regular D28, had just a little bit um, more responsiveness in the lighter dynamics. I'm not a very heavy-handed player, so if, you, some, if you're someone that really picks hard, the D28's for you. The HD28 is a little bit more sensitive, but it doesn't have all that headroom that the D28 does. Uh, the other small difference, which is just aesthetic, is that the binding on the HD28 is herringbone, uh, similar to what you'll see on the Eastman. I've been to the Martin Guitar Factory and toured it twice in my life. It's in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which is not too far from where I grew up. Uh, and their selection process, where they figure out out of their entire woodstock which woods are going to be used for their higher end instruments like this, uh, it's very specific. They have a lot of criteria that it needs to follow. And one of the main things that you can notice instantly is that on this guitar, uh, especially on the top and also on the back and sides, the grain is very Thin. It's very narrow. It's slow growth wood. Now I'm no expert in guitars, but apparently this leads to just being a little bit more stable and reliable, especially over over the years. Uh, slow growth wood is less likely to warp or react to humidity changes and, and dryness and stuff. Uh, on the Eastman, I can tell. Well, I'll let you look at it for yourself. Just looking at it, I'm, I mean, I'm sure you can see on camera. I'm not sure how to quantify it, but the the grain on the Eastman is noticeably wider. Uh, both on the top and on the back and sides. Uh, if you look at the headstock, it's kind of funny actually. It looks pretty much exactly like a Martin, except it just says Eastman on it. One thing that I noticed right away uh, on this Eastman was just how nice the fretwork is on the sides. I mean, there's absolutely, there's, there's, I played the whole thing chromatically as soon as I got it out of the case. There's no dead frets, it's all even, uh, but especially something that's pretty time consuming and you won't find on a lot of Gibsons even. Uh, is that the fret ends are, are nicely cut and beveled, and there's no sharp edges or anything. That's pretty time consuming. If you know anything about Eastman as a company, you'll know that their instrument factory is in Beijing. Uh, and there's actually a couple videos floating around here on the internet of what it looks like inside that factory. When I saw it, I was really surprised to see that there's not many machines, uh, and later I learned that that's a well-known fact about Eastman, that most of their work is done by hand. Um, I actually have one of their lower priced models this is the, the PCH uh, 1 series, so it's got a solid top and laminate back and sides for $300. I found that the, the quality on this one was really surprising for $300. Um, and I think that's just a testament to their workers and everything that's, that's done by hand there. When I was at the Martin factory, and I actually dug out the name tag, one of the name tags I have from, from my last visit. This was, it says July 12th. 2013 I went with my girlfriend at the time now my wife and when I walked in there I was really surprised to see how many machines were running uh, and the workers instead of really like working on the instruments they were kind of just there to keep the machines running I specifically remember seeing a dreadnought top getting cut out uh, and the way it works is you see the top there's actually two little dog ears here on either side of this inside piece of the the instrument uh, and that's how it's attached to this big mechanized arm that basically just moves it from station to station as it cuts it out or sands it, 
or it does whatever process, and then when it's finished, the worker takes it off, moves it to the next station, and it continues on some mechanical process there. Uh, and the same can be said for the finishing process. That's pretty much all mechanized in the Martin factory. One thing that I wanted to note about the finishing process is it's pretty hard to find an American-made guitar with a nitrocellulose finish on it until you hit a certain price tier. Uh, and that's because in this country there's environmental laws about, um, about how much a single company can consume of this, this product. It's not, not a great product for the environment in China. There's no laws about that. So you'll find nitrocellulose. It's on that $300 guitar. It's on this one. It's on their high-end acoustics. Nitrocellulose is one of the best uh, finishes that you can put on an instrument, short of a violin lacquer. And so that's why you see some of the mid to lower end models that are made in the US all have polyurethane instead, which is much thicker, more plasticky, and kind of, in my opinion, dampens the guitar from resonating. Now, one last thing I wanted to mention before I get into the final part of this video where you can just listen to the guitar again, and I'll be done talking, I promise, uh, is that if you're thinking about purchasing an Eastman, it can be a little bit difficult to find a dealer where you can try it out in person, especially if you're in a more rural area of the country. Um, now, the quality control, like I said, is pretty good, so if you hear a demo online, uh, you might want to try finding one that they'll ship to you, and if they have a good return policy, then it's no hassle for you. Uh, but you should know that a used Eastman, for some reason, this guitar company has a terrible resale value. If I were to sell that Martin, I'd probably get $2,500 for it. I think I bought it for $3,200. Uh, this Eastman was priced at $1,800. And generally on reverb, you'll see them for 14 or 1200. This one's in basically perfect condition. Uh, it had a replaced pick guard and replaced bridge pins. Dave's Guitar Shop in Wisconsin, where I bought this, had it listed for 995. Uh, and so that's what caught my eye about this. I had been thinking about this model for a while. Uh, and a few weeks ago, I saw this guitar listed. I didn't jump on it yet. And then I came back to it a couple days back and I saw it was still listed. So I thought, you know, I've been looking for a mandolin as well. I've been playing this cheap mandolin that I've had for the last 10 years, and it's, it's time to upgrade. Uh, so I went to their site, and I wanted to see if I could find a used mandolin that I could make them an offer for both. Generally, when people are selling used instruments, they're open to negotiating, even if it's a big guitar shop. Uh, and so what I ended up getting was this Eastman 404 mandolin uh, that they had listed for 575 I made an offer of $1,300 for both of these. I think we settled on $1,400. Um, so I got a pretty good deal, in my opinion. I got basically a new guitar, plus a free mandolin. Anyway, enough talking from me. Uh, if you have any questions about this instrument or my experience with the Martin versus this Eastman, uh, just let me know in the comments down below. I'm pretty good at getting back to people. Uh, and if you dug this video, make sure you hit the like button, maybe subscribe to the channel. I do a lot of videos talking about acoustic guitars, pickups, string comparisons, uh, and I hope that one of the other videos that I have will be of interest to you.